Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey. I'm Holly. Back there is Tucker and he's even got a friend with him and we are hunkered down, loaded down in this 2023 GR Corolla hot hatch. Hot hatch. Hot hatch. Uh, we have all four seats occupied, two car seats in the back, and a complete hatch full of luggage back in the back. And in this video, I'm behind the wheel. More on that in a little bit. But we're going to tell you exactly what this little vehicle is like on a road trip and in our daily life. Stay tuned. Yes, we are in a GR Corolla hot hatch. That puts a smile on my face. <laughs> this thing is so much fun. And I get to very unironically wear my row your own way t-shirt. <laughs> very happy about all of that. But because of that, we have a six speed manual in this car. That's why I'm behind the wheel. You're yet to let me. I phrase it that way, you're yet to let me teach you how to drive a stick. So in this video, I'm behind the wheel. Sorry guys, you gotta settle for me driving yet again. But Holly. We're just way too busy for you to <laughs> teach me. We are. Doesn't mean you haven't formed opinions of this car. You've ridden in it, you've seen it, you've uh, experienced it inside and out. We've gone to Kilgore and back. We've yep. put some miles on it. Should we start outside, inside? Where do you want to go first on this thing? Uh, let's start with the outside and move inside. Okay, what are your thoughts on the styling of this GR Corolla? Certainly was not what I was expecting <laughs> when you told me we were getting a Corolla. So it is the hatchback version, and because it's the GR Corolla, I don't know if you remember, those initials were before the Supra that you loved so much too. I did like the Supra. It was a GR Supra. So uh, we'll get into that in a little bit. But yes, this is the Go Fast one. It's got a little bit different face. The Go Fast Corolla? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yeah, a little bit different face, bigger grill. Mm -hmm. Very happy face up front. <laughs> but it's not like a soft, it's no. like a... <laughs> <laughs> and then as you mentioned, yes, very big hips out back because this one's all-wheel drive. Mm -hmm. Most Corollas are front-wheel drive. This one is all-wheel drive and they put some pretty wide tires on this for this car. So needed to uh, puff out those hips back there in the back. I guess so, yeah. So, wider fenders up front, wider fenders back in the back. You know, the red definitely gives it a sportier mm -hmm. feel. So, I, I definitely think, we do talk about color a lot, but I think that on a vehicle like this, the color really would change the look of the car. And I, than I believe normal. you can only get the GR Corolla in this supersonic red, a white, and a gray. So not a lot of options out there for you. And the supersonic red is an extra cost option. It's funny that you say that because I was thinking if I, I'm not usually a red person, but if I was going to get this car, I would either want it in red or white. I think it might look different in any other color. And uh, for all you viewers, I have driven it in white as well. That was a super rare Marizo edition, one of 200. No back seat in that one. Wouldn't have quite worked for this trip or for our family. My daily driver is Chevy's 10 year old competitor to this. I drive a Chevy Cruze. It is this size class. Feels about like this on the inside, right? As far as our overall size impression? Yes, no, maybe so? This feels a little smaller, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it does not help the fact that we have an extra person with it. Yes. All right, installing a child seat in the back of a GR Corolla. Much like a regular Corolla hatchback, there are a lot of pros and cons 
welcome to the GR Corolla. But I will note before I bring the car seat around, the lower latch points are hidden under this cloth um, divider or cloth pad at the back of the seat back. But there are nice little slits that are stitched on both sides that allow pretty easy access back here. The top tether has to deal with the hard tonneau cover back in the back, but I'll show you that in just a second. The doors also don't really open all that wide, and being a small car, it's kind of hard to get it in, which is exactly what I'm about to do. So, bringing Tucker's forward facing Rico car seat in, you can see it's a little tight of a fit. I'm going to go ahead and feed that top tether through underneath the adjustable headrest and get this down into place. Fish these lower tethers in. They are very easy uh, to attach with that cloth down there. So that's pretty simple and really easy to very snugly get the car seat down into place. But now let's go look at that top tether situation. All right, coming back to the back to secure that top tether means getting into the hatch area, but you can see we've got this hard parcel shelf tonneau cover back here in the back. And there's our top tether. You can see, not really easy to feed through there. So I'm gonna go ahead and unloop this on both sides and just all out remove it because that is the easiest way of dealing with the top tether back here because after you remove it, you've got wide open access back here that's very easy. You can see there's a little slit here that you kind of have to fish it through and then find the actual attachment. But once you do, you're able to tighten that in and get it into place very nice and snugly. And then we've got to put that hard parcel shelf back in. So overall for a small car like this, I give it about a B, mostly because of that parcel shelf. How many of you are actually going to drive with one of those in all the time? I don't know but definitely makes a difference when installing and removing car seats. And I will go ahead and throw this out there. I'm surprised you haven't brought it up. The rear hatch, while super practical, uh, does have less space than a normal Corolla hatchback because to achieve the perfect weight distribution that they wanted in this car, the battery for the car is actually back there. I was wondering what that was. And they put a massive platform of styrofoam surrounding it so it's a flat load floor but really cut into our space. luggage space back there so yeah. we are crammed in no oh, i was gonna ask you about that i was like what what's under here why are we not using this thing <laughs> a battery that's about this big but they decided just to block off the oh, whole spot I, interesting okay. not how i would have done it but I'm not a Toyota racing engineer, so there you go. So people race these cars? Yes, and I did. I got to take this exact one around the track with a helmet on, find out exactly what it's capable of, and trust me, babe, no matter how much I may make you wince in traffic, that is nothing to what I got to do and what this thing is capable of. I, I, I am not brave enough to find the limits of this car. <laughs> we uh, still don't need me doing it in traffic. <laughs> Okay, okay. So no <laughs> no racing merging onto I-20 or anything? No. No? Okay. No, no. So inside you, you think it feels a little bit smaller than my car, but what are your thoughts on layout interior feelings in here? Well, the interior is really nice. It's simple. Mm -hmm. Not a whole lot going on. Not a whole lot going on, which isn't a bad thing, just a thing. I do really like how the dashboard is designed, um, so it kind of has like a stitch that's cut in that just gives it a little interesting Not just a design. slab of... Yeah, just not it. And it's a nice um, texture too. It's not like just the plastic feel of anything. And everything's really well made. Um, if, if we were talking about it for a family vehicle it doesn't fit very well what are you wanting this car as our family vehicle we'll get into that later uh, <laughs> um yeah there's just not a lot of storage space there's not a console right here yeah. the, 
the um that one bothers me more than it should i think mostly because i expect to get in here and lean on the center console every time i get in the vehicle and there's nothing there and i don't know it's weird not having a center console it is and there is the glove compartments big enough but you know as a mom i have hand sanitizer napkins tissues wipes which are all usually all in usually right here and there's not really a place for those things without taking up your cup holder or something like that which so for me driving this as a family vehicle doesn't really make a lot of sense if we were going on a, a trip that was longer than one night mm -hmm. we our stuff wouldn't have fit with yeah. a kid um well two kids well <laughs> with one kid, with one kid I don't we could have would have we could have folded the 60 40 split well, seat down and we would have made it work we, we uh, of course you I would have made look, it work look you can <laughs> I used to drive I I say this all the time people get on to me or make fun of me I moved myself to Florida and back in a Mini Cooper Tetris is one of my favorite games we would have made it work yep. but is it what I would have chosen yeah probably not <laughs> In here, we have an 8-inch infotainment with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and it's running the new Toyota infotainment system, which kind of surprised me. I was expecting it to be running the old uh, infotainment, but it is the new updated Toyota system that we've sampled in the Tundra, many other vehicles. I like it a lot, and it does a great job of alerting you anytime you're approaching a school zone. I think that's really cool. It pops up right here. It says you're approaching a school zone. So that's a nice little touch in my eyes uh, when it comes to this infotainment. It's a little on the small side for modern era, but so is this car. It's a little on the small side. Yeah. So. And then I have a full digital gauge cluster up here with some customizable tiles. I have adaptive cruise control, lane keeping, lane trace, like Toyota Safety Sense 3.0, I believe in this one. So I've got a nice host of um, safety appointments in this, uh, as well as uh, blind spot monitoring and all that good stuff. So got a lot of good tech in this. And then several different drive modes here that do change what my gauges look like. I'm in sport now and I have a much sportier looking uh, gauge cluster here in front of me but like that a lot the six speed is the best <laughs> so much better than the six speed in my car mm -hmm. but that's just me chi wireless charger I, I can't get it to stay working longer than five minutes it oh, it's yeah. a struggle for me maybe your phone i don't know i haven't tried it uh we do have heated front seats up here yeah. i have a heated steering are, wheel they are um cloth seats did yes. you say that no i did not which i don't know how i feel about it I like the design of the mm -hmm. seats and they're super comfortable. Yeah, they hold you in. Uh huh. They kind of look like race car seats, which mm -hmm. is, uh, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean we have to drive crazy. <laughs> um, but, you know, I don't know. There's not a lot of cars that have cloth seats these days. Especially not uh, testers that we get anyway. So, but I do have a leather wrapped steering wheel, leather wrapped handle here, leather wrapped mm -hmm. shift knob, heated steering it's nice. wheel. It's care, not, everything's nice. Care to grab the steering wheel? Give thoughts? Yeah, it looks squishy. It is squishy. I like it. I like it. It's good. We've got all our driver controls here, all of our controls for the screen here. The radio controls are kind of slim, annoying, uh, just how slim they are. We do, do you have. Say annoying? Yeah, they're oh. just a little too slim. It's They could be a little bit bigger. So, yes, annoying. <laughs> Real fat thumbs? Yes. Uh, it is tilt and telescope. Oh, so. nice. I know you like that and we're stopped like uh, right now but here we go we're gonna be merging on to 20 I'm gonna you know not give it the beans cuz we've got kids who are trying to sleep <laughs> they're doing their best we're to try and sleep. Hope we'll sleep 
Uh, again, if you really want to see me put this car through its paces on a track, I've got that video already for you on the channel. But as far as living with it, this thing really likes to rev to a 7,000 RPM redline. It does have 300 horsepower, 273 pound-feet of torque, I do believe. Just driving this thing around in traffic, and it's always got the power when you need it. And this six-speed is a really good six-speed. I really like it. It's fun. And a couple of things to note, because I know, like, if you're a gearhead and you love sporty cars you probably already know this but if you're not it's loud <laughs> yeah so turbocharged three cylinder under the hood three exhaust pipes back in the back but i will it's... say on the on the inside when you're riding in it it's loud but it's not as annoying as i thought it was going to be when you're like driving when i kept hearing you drive into the onto our street into the garage and stuff like that that's what i told you i was like it's loud like is it annoying am i going to so here we are cruising at a texas highway speeds yeah we've got a little bit of road noise mm -hmm. part of that's because we've got some pilot sport 4s tires in this part of that is because of the stiffer suspension part of that is because it's a corolla and part of that is textured pavement but no real engine drone sound from the exhaust it's not i wouldn't say it's any different than my chevy cruise yeah. riding in here yeah which brings me to what does the ride feel like to you we've been rough roads smooth roads textured roads so for the most part it's like comfortable sitting in here the seat is comfortable i haven't felt uncomfortable now i will say i am a short person um and i feel like i have enough leg room but I could tell like if I was any in Tucker's car seat is behind me so I'll, I'll make that caveat um but I felt if I was any taller you might feel uncomfortable um if you had a person behind you or a car seat behind you um now I that way but I'm a short person so in my solo review, I sat behind myself here at 510, and because of the clutch on this one, I sit a little bit closer than I would in an automatic, but I, I felt I had plenty of room here and back there um, behind myself, so if and that's then, any indication. And then as far as the way it drives, I mean, like, when you go over bumps, you feel it. Yeah. So, this thing is meant to keep you planted on a racetrack, and yes you, you you notice um it, it is one of the more firm vehicles we've tested here on the channel together probably, probably not the most firm that i've tested but definitely us together so that brings me to unless you've got any other points you want to make i don't think so window sticker wait a second no i'm uh, just kidding <laughs> window sticker what do you think this vehicle retails for? I will say this will just help set the stage a little bit because of the GR badge. It stands for Gazoo Racing, by the way. Okay. The Gazoo Racing badge was also on the red Supra that you liked so much. Mm -hmm. That one stickered for 48, I believe. Okay. Uh, which is their like premium halo car. Sure. Um, but we had the four cylinder version. There is a more powerful six cylinder. Then there's this, and there's also the G Gazoo Racing GR86, uh, which is a two door, four seat, fun little car. And it starts at 30,000. So that'll just kind of set the stage for what do you think this resales for with that information. Okay, this is what I was going to say before you said all that. Okay. And I'm going to stick it. with it. I'm going to stick with it. 39. Okay, very close. I will direct you to, we have window stickers there in the glove box. And the final price is right down there. I'm good at this thing. <laughs> yes. Uh, I should go on Price is Right. <laughs> yes, you should. Because I think we'd be uh, driving this one home if you were. <laughs> yeah. It is 40159 Yep. And it's got a few options on it, like the Performance Pack, which I would highly recommend. 
if you are buying this one with my mindset of having some fun, uh, limited slip front and rear differentials, you and I didn't even talk about the fact, really, I alluded to it, this is all wheel drive. So if the situation got treacherous, um, all wheel drive. Road yeah. So whenever you turn it on, it's routing 60% of that power up front, 40 in the back, but I can turn this knob here and it does 30 up front, 70 in the back for a little more fun, or I can push this button and it's 50-50 and that's track mode. Mm. But uh, yeah. We so. don't need no track mode. <laughs> Not currently. Yeah. So $41,000 essentially. Yeah. Well, I mean, I wouldn't have even rounded it up okay. $41,000. So $40,000. Just, just over $40,000. <clears throat> And you can cut that down with just the paint, right? Yep, yep, yep. So how do you feel about this car now? We ain't buying it. <laughs> so my hot take that I've been holding from you, this is hands down my favorite Toyota product that we've tested. Really? Hands down. I have loved every second of this vehicle. Really? Yes, I thoroughly enjoy it. And... This is my favorite $40,000 car that I think you can buy right now. If we were to buy a vehicle and $40,000 was our budget, I, I'd be, I would be hard pressing you for this one. Even there's no truck. I mean, it works for what we need. And again, we've got an extra kid with us on this trip. That, that back seat folds down. I'm not, I'm not sold. I, I'm smitten, babe. Like, smitten? Really? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. I, I am willing to forgive some grievances that I may have. It's got I mean, a huge I wouldn't dash. That, I wouldn't. Uh, that's a grievance? Yeah, and the Qi wireless charger doesn't work, but pff, no center console. Pff, like, this is, this is, this is, this is the one. I, mm, really? I like it. I like it a lot. Really interesting. And on that bombshell, <laughs> on that bombshell, if you want to see more from Holly, some behind the scenes from her, some additional takes from her, from Tucker, from myself, you can find her at Female Consumer on Instagram. You can find everything that we do on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube. Everything is at GT Garage Talk. Or you can read more about this vehicle and everything else we've tested at GTGarageTalk.com. Be sure and hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, follow, like, comment, all the things to let the algorithm know to show you more content from us. Absolutely go check out my video taking this around the track and its main rival, the Honda Civic Type R. But we've got a uh, trip to get to and Dallas to get to. So until next time, gearheads, bye.